So, and then maybe the questions are, our only question is, would you like to accept this? Yes. Dr. Koshman. Oh, hey. Hi. 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 <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Now, I know we said that we wanted to come and ask a few questions about your grant uh, application, but pretty much the only question we have is, would you accept this check oh my goodness. for your grant? <laughs> Holy smokes, Rodrigo, we're wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> we can do the work. Oh, so this is for your grant for a therapeutic reversal of prenatal signaling, signaling and DIPG. Um, you you certainly impressed the Medical Advisory Council and the DIPG Collaborative is so excited to present this to you. That is awesome. Yeah. Thank you all for coming down here. We totally accept. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Happy to do the work. It's really great. Yeah, well, and thank on you. behalf of all of our children, we want to thank you guys and your entire lab for all the hard work you're doing. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Thank you for everything, as always. Awesome. Because I thought we were going to be discussing, I actually, honestly, what I thought it was going to be, how could we readjust this grant so, to potentially <laughs> get it funded in a future cycle? And I was like, okay, we can have that conversation. Not necessarily that you guys were coming to give me the grant, but that's really exciting and awesome. Um, so this is a project that we've been working on for a little while. And what we wanted to do was to have sequencing from um, as many spots as we could separate from the same, um, from, from the ponds where the tumor was, and then get as much information as we could about each spot and try to figure out how the spots were different, um, how that was different from, um, uh, you know, how we might see differences in the um, DN uh, DNA that's mutated as well as genes um, that were overexpressed or underexpressed. Um, we call that um, heterogeneity within the tumor. So, um, at the at the time, there's really very few DIPGs that have been studied at that detail in that detail, and still there's not a lot that we know. One of the other things we saw was we looked for a gene that was expressed called ID1, and and the reason we did that was because um, we saw a mutation in a gene ACVR1, and the Hawkins lab had just published a paper on um, ACVR1 and its upregulation of this gene ID1. And ID1 has been found in a lot of human tumors, including like breast cancer and adult GBM, to um, uh, control invasiveness of the tumor. And DIPG is the most invasive tumor. So we thought that's, um, it, you know, it made sense to the Hawkins lab and it made sense to our lab that, that it may be involved in DIPG. But that's about as far as the field has gotten. Just to, we, we know that, that ACVR1 upregulated one, but we don't know um, in human tumors, um, is ID1 expressed differently in different spots in the tumor? Um, is it expressed in all DIPGs? And is there a way that you can target it? So all that's, we don't know as of today. We need to try it. So what we've developed a lot in our lab is mouse models. And so we have our best mouse model is this model where, as the brain is developing, um, looking at the ID1 gene and then how proteins um, might bind that and cause it to be upregulated. Our best explanation of what's going on is that when a child develops their brainstem, um, which mostly happens prenatally, um, they use that, those cells use ID1 to form a brainstem, basically. And then the brainstem is formed, they turn that signal pathway off. The brainstem doesn't need to keep growing. It's formed by you know age uh, four to ten at the latest. What we think happens in DIPG is through various reasons, and some, one of those might be ACVR1, but it might be other reasons as well. The cells turn it back up, and there, it's inappropriately turned on, so it's dividing like crazy and it's invading like crazy, and it's really a signaling pathway that should have been turned off right as soon as that brainstem was made. And so our hope is that this is relevant actually for the DIPGs even beyond ACVR1 mutation and that CBD or future drugs targeting ID1 can be used to slow that down. So that's the grant in a nutshell.